They were supposed to be America's answer to the Beatles, but who knew a made-up band for TV would have such an influence on pop culture? Borrowing ideas from the Beatles film Hard Day's Night, the Monkees portrayed four mop-top band members trying to make it in California. According to Wikipedia, aspiring filmmakers Bob Raffleson and, Rob and Bert Schneider, inspired by the Beatles, decided to develop this TV series about a fictional rock and roll group. Wikipedia notes that on September 8, 1965, the Daily Variety and the Hollywood Reporter ran an ad seeking rock and roll musician singers for acting roles in this TV series. As many as 400 hopefuls showed up to be considered, but most of us know who made the cut. According to the article Who Are the Monkeys by Andrew Sandoval, the group members were selected via a casting call, word of mouth, and just plain luck. All four had prior musical and acting experience. Wikipedia states that Ruffelson and Schneider hired novice director James Frawley to teach the four actors improvisational comedy. Each of the four was given direct personalities to different personalities to portray. Dolenz was the funny one, Nesmith was the smart and serious one, Tork was the naive one, and Jones was the cute one. Their, act, their characters were loosely based on themselves, ex with the exception of Tork, who was actually an intellectual one. The character types also had much in common with the re respective personalities of the Beatles, with Dolan representing the madcap attitude of John Lennon, Nesmith affecting the, deep, the deadpan seriousness of George Harrison, Tork depicting the odd man out quality of Ringo Starr, and Jones conveying the pinup appeal of Paul McCartney. Wikipedia notes critics of the Monkees observed that they were simply the prefab for, a made-for-TV knockoff of the Beatles. The Beatles, however, took this with stride and hosted a party for the Monkees when they visited England. According to the History of Rock and Roll by Thomas E. Larson, the Monkees unleashed a short-lived strand of insipid pop which, which then became known as bubblegum. Sandoval states, contrary to popular belief, the Monkees did perform instrumentally on some of, this, uh, some of these sessions and provided lead vocals for all of their recorded efforts. Additionally, group member Michael Nesmith produced and wrote some of the Monkees' earliest recordings. However, their greatest success and biggest hits did come from other musicians and songwriters. Fictional Friction developed after criticism that they did not participate on their own records and they did attempt to take control of their musical career. During their two-year lifespan of the show, the Monkees hit the top, 11, the top 40 11 times, with three number one hits. It debuted on September 12, 1966, and ran for two seasons. 58 half-hour programs were produced in an 18-period month, when the show ran, and the show won for two Emmys in 1967. According to Sandoval, in 1966, the Monkees starred in their one and only featured film, Head. A collaborat collaborative effort with Jack Nicholson, the movie found only a limited initial audience, but soon became a cult classic. After attempts to tour on their own, the Monkees soon broke up. According to Sandoval, Monkey Mania was again revived in 1986 with seven Monkees albums on the Billboard charts and a new single from Mickey and Peter that went to the top 40. In 1987, the entire group reunited to receive a star of the Hollywood Walk, and Walk of Fame. According to Wikipedia, Mickey Dolan stated that just before the untimely passing of Davy Jones, all four original group members were contemplating another reunion. Up until Jones' death, the Monkees had been one of the only few remaining major pop groups in the 1960s with all of their members alive.